On the sunny beaches of the Caribbean, the old sailors like to recount that the goddess of the sea one day fell in love with a handsome fisherman. She took him to her palace of amber, deep in the ocean. Enraged, the god of thunder, in love with her, hurled a thunderbolt to destroy the palace. The young man lost his life. Inconsolable, the beautiful goddess burst into tears, which turned into amber and fell on a remote island, the Dominican Republic. My name is Philippe Tourner, and in my work I draw mostly things that I see in nature. Wood is not traditionally a medium used by jewelers, although it has been used. I've found a fairly ideal link between wood and, uh, and the resin that initially flowed from the wood, and I think that amber and wood, in this way, are a perfect match. I think what's most appropriate for this wood is amber from the Dominican Republic. Bathed by the Caribbean Sea to the south and the Atlantic Ocean to the north, the Dominican Republic is part of the island of Hispaniola. Christopher Columbus landed on this island December 5, 1492. It was then inhabited by the Taino Indians, one of the most advanced indigenous civilizations of the West Indies. After a turbulent history, which included the dictatorship of General Trujillo, the Dominican Republic is now a democracy. Its economy is mainly dependent on agriculture, with tobacco, the cigar industry, cacao, and sugarcane. But the main activity is undoubtedly tourism, which was developed in a major way, exploiting its exceptional beaches and the hospitality of its people. Dominican land contains many resources, including a precious gem, amber. It is also home to a stone the color of the ocean that we can only find on this island, the Larimar. In the southwest, near the border with Haiti, women and children look along the beaches for Larimar in the alluvium brought down by the rivers of the nearby mountains. This blue volcanic stone is found only in the Dominican Republic. When it was discovered in 1970, many amber miners moved with their families to the region near the town of Bajarona to try to make their fortune. Unfortunately, the deep blue stones are very rare. 
the amount of deposits is reduced compared to amber, which is spread across the country. Also, the working conditions in the mines are very difficult and extremely dangerous. Miners descend every day, risking their lives in deep galleries, poorly supported and poorly ventilated, often without finding any blue stones. My name is Tony Franquis Cueva. I am married and have two children. And I've been working in the mines for 15 years already. At this moment, work is a bit difficult because the holes are filled with earth and there's not enough time to exploit them. We work very, very hard. There was a case where four young people died. It was not negligence. It does happen. This is not the hill that killed them. They died of asphyxiation. It's the things in the air. Larimer cutting has developed as a veritable trade in this region. Residents have learned to work it to give it a form usable in jewelry. Although it is much harder than amber, in the same way, it is polished to bring out its blue and white swirls. Of the quantities produced in the mines, stones with a blue suitable for manufacture of jewelry represent only 5%. Many people left Amber for Larimar, believing they would make their fortune. Tony was one of them. But today, the days go by and the money does not come in. Doubt has got a hold of him. He must make a decision before leading his family into catastrophe. Magic and the occult are part of everyday life on the island. The miners often use them to make important decisions, as is the case today with Tony. Let's see the cards. Let's see what we learn. Let's see what happens to you and to me. It's a problem that comes from you, and you've had for a long time. It's not very serious, but you have to make a decision, and fast. In this case, the problem will solve itself. You pull the other card, see what it says. What's the problem? Someone is after you. You have to walk away from your family for some time or you will starve. You can try to draw a card like this one. I see that if you go soon, you'll find much joy in a new job. This card represents money and you'll find a stone, many yellow stones that will change your life. You have to go. Success is down the road. The cards say, go to your destiny. Hello, darling. How are you? Well, I just came back from work. We're working very hard. It's a lot of work. We extract a lot of stones. Yesterday we ended up taking out three quintals, but kept nothing. I kept only this one. Oh, good idea. Yes, but it's not enough for all of our expenses. True, we have a large family, and we spend a lot on the children. I don't know if we're going to survive. I'll have to look for another job. 
The mining of amber is much better. Yes, it's a good stone. This must be done. Here it's not going well. It's really bad. We have nothing. Yes. I'll sell it and I'll give you money. And I'll go work elsewhere in another mine. Because I cannot stay with my arms and hands working without finding anything. We have no money. No savings. Yes, I'll quit this job and I'll go to Santiago to work in another mine. The amber mines near Santiago are more than 200 kilometers from Tony's village. To get there, with his meager savings, he uses the benevolence of the truckers that will transport him close to his destination for just a few pesos. Tony is very determined to make his fortune. For his wife, his children, he spares no effort and doesn't hesitate to walk long hours to reach the mine. Hey, cousin. I went up there, but hey, nothing big. How are you doing there? Well, my brother, we pick and pick, but I don't think we're going to find something today. Okay, let's go. Miners dig in casings several hundred meters deep. Carved in the clay rock, these dangerous tunnels are not supported. Despite experience, accidents are frequent. They occasionally will put up a piece of wood to avoid disaster. The search for amber is a very traditional enterprise. Its discovery is often due to the intuition of the miner. There are no real veins, but geological layers in which they were deposited long ago, and today have become fossil resins. Amber is like the copal, a resin produced by various species of plants. It is a plant defense, the resin. And amber is older than the copal. It distinguishes itself from amber because copal is still soluble in alcohol. In general, copal remains copal for 50,000 years. And amber itself is the oldest resin. The oldest known amber dates back 300 million years. Amber from the Dominican Republic is newer because it dates back only 20 to 30 million years. These resins have a big advantage, which is that they fossilized almost everything that was in the forest at the time. So virtually complete fauna. Small flies, beetles, termites, cockroaches, these insects, fossilized in the resins, undergo a chemical transformation. So the interior of the animal will often be transformed into a carbon powder, coal, and therefore the organic matter is degraded, the cells are degraded, and the DNA inside the cells as well. We cannot expect to find, in the ancient fossil resins, in amber, the DNA of fossilized insects and plants. The DNA is not fossilized, and therefore, the story of Jurassic Park, a mosquito that has bitten a dinosaur and from which blood and DNA was recovered, is just a fable. The mines will produce incredible amounts of amber, and then, with no transition, will provide nothing for several months. This is a serious problem for the miners, 
who feed their families by selling their discoveries. Listen, Tony, you must go to the mine of cacao. You have to find a friend who will help you find a new job. You understand? But the amber here is most expensive. It's different. Yes, you come here, but there's no more production, you know? The amber here is better, but there is no doubt, for now, that there's no more. So, no problem. I'll go. The most sought-after gem on the island is undoubtedly amber. It is distributed in many places. With its color and smooth appearance, it is considered a symbol of beauty and sweetness. The Dominican Republic is not the only country in the world to produce amber. Several parts of Europe, Asia, Africa, and others have it in their subsoil. Here, what we find most fascinating are the qualities and colors of the different varieties. What are you looking for here? Amber. Dominican Amber has always been famous. The book, Decades of the New World, written in 1493 by Pedro Martiro of Angleria, speaks of Christopher Columbus. He discovered that this earth naturally produces gold, cotton, spices, like pepper, trees with scale insects, green-colored amber, and many other valuable products in abundance. It was obviously impossible for any explorer to ignore the pervasiveness of this matter on the island. Is there amber here? Yes, there is amber. And also in a mine not far from here. The word amber comes from the Arabic anbar, meaning the sperm whale. In reality, there are two types of amber that should not be confused. Gray amber, which is accretion produced by the stomach of sperm whales. It's a rare substance used in the manufacture of perfumes. And amber, which interests us here, and is a fossil resin. Formerly, it was thought that the sun's rays hitting the sea turned into amber. These popular beliefs had not deceived Aristotle, who from the 4th century BC had already recognized the true nature of amber. My name is Jorge Martinez, and I'm a craftsman in amber and larimar. I have 37 years of experience in the field of amber and three years in the field of Larimar. I spent almost my entire life working with amber.
Amber has 14 colors, including yellow, blue, green, and many other variations. For example, in the yellow there are 14 different shades, also in blue and so on. Spotted amber will have a variety of different colors. Rose amber is very hard to find. I find one piece every 10 years, even when working with one quintal of amber per month. The different colors of amber may be due to the type of plant from which the resin came from but also the conditions and duration of its fossilization, the presence of organic and mineral elements in the amber, and a change in temperature and pressure during its formation. All these may play a role in determining its color. My name is Jorge Caridad. The museum's history began when I started selling collections of amber to people from Europe in 1977 and 1978. At the time, amber was not worth very much. You could buy fossils in amber. So the prices were, a pound of amber cost 20 pesos at the time. Customers could easily purchase fossils for a dollar or two. I sold many pieces without knowing what I was selling, really. It was the business of supply and demand. Then, a client invited me to Europe, to Germany, and I went to see the Basen Museum's collection and the Stuka Museum of Natural History. I arrived there and I was very surprised to see all those pieces, the entire collection, spiders, ants, frogs, and really I was ashamed and I started questioning myself. And I told myself that what I could do was to create a museum in Santo Domingo. Jurassic Park was a very important event because it made Dominican amber famous worldwide. Obviously the public doesn't know, they think they can go into a mine and get 100 mosquitoes or 200 flies. You can sometimes find just one, two or three mosquitoes per year. There are not that many. You can go to the mine and ask for a number of different insects, but we can only take what is given to us. For me, Jurassic Park allowed me to sell everything I had in stock, and that's how we were able to buy a new part of the museum. I wish they would make another film. Well, all over the world there are counterfeits. Even here, tourists can buy a lizard for 200 pesos or $20. Amber was already well known in ancient times. At the very beginning of our era, the wife of Nero, whose hair was the color of amber, made this gem one of the most coveted of its time. The famous Roman naturalist, Pliny the Elder, recounts that a small amber statue was then worth more than a slave. In each house in the region, those who do not work in the mines are involved in cleaning and sorting the special resin. The practice allows them to do this sorting by distributing gems of lots of different qualities and different values in anticipation of the sales.
Oh, look at this stone. Can you clean the stone for me? The large one there. This one? That one. And the other one. If you like, you can clean this one. Okay, no problem. This, this big one from the group. Get it out. This one? You guys keep working. I'm going to the carnival. See you later. My name is Riquillo, but everyone calls me Tahiti. I was born here, and I've lived here all my life. I've known Amber since I was born. I started working with my father at the age of seven, so I was in it already. So I've been bound to Amber for many years. When my father died, I was already very invested in his work. I was involved in negotiations, a task he'd already delegated to me. And when he died, I continued to work with Amber. How are you? Come, come here and see the amber. Look, it's very beautiful. Beautiful. With insects, look, there are also fossils. Look at this work, it's very different work. Work for the carnival of La Vega. It's beautiful, is it not? Very beautiful Dominican amber. The best amber in the world. If you want to do business, I can sell you amber, if that's what you seek. I'm looking for amber mines. I can take you to the amber mines when you want. Do you want to go now? Yes, yes, come on, let's go. In the Dominican Republic, amber miners, called the ambreros, work day and night to remove the special matter from the earth. But they also know how to have fun when the carnival period comes around. All the worries fly away. Only the music and partying count. Each region is represented in boisterous parades like the one in Vega. Artists up their creativity, trying to make masks that are even more beautiful and richer than those of previous years. Amber is traditionally and widely used in the costumes. Nothing is too exceptional to compete with the other teams. The Caribbean ambiance and fragrance of madness lasts for several days and nights. Then comes the moment when the amber reminds the ambreros of their reason. I prefer to be a miner. 
but I rarely get to work regularly in the mines, because the miners need me to buy their amber. Miners need me to be with them. I buy the hardware they need to work. There are many of them, and I cannot stay in a single mine. The quantity of amber they have in this area depends on rain, because if it rains, they cannot work. So if you do not work, no amber. So if you happen to have a season with little rain, more sun, you can have 10 pounds of blue amber a month. Which equates to about 5,000 grams of blue amber a month. We extracted parts of Latoka that have been sold for more than $100,000. And museums where they are now currently estimate them at millions of dollars. The miners work in groups of six to eight, sometimes ten. All the expenses, equipment, food, whatever they need to work, it's an intermediary that pays for it. It could be me or someone else. We do not sign any papers. We discuss and we negotiate with the group leader. I will therefore finance the cost of labor. I lend them money. When they begin to extract amber, they sell it only to me, at the price set by our prior negotiation. If they extract a lot, I get a lot. If they extract a little bit, I get a little bit. And if they don't find any amber, I continue to finance until they do. Well, we have about 2,000 or 3,000 people who benefit directly or indirectly from the trade of amber. This means that of these 3,000 people, there are 1,000 or 1,200 people who directly benefit from amber, as miners or as intermediaries, or working in the workshops. Man has always been fascinated by this honey-colored material. The oldest amber object associated with humans is over 30,000 years old. It is an amulet with a hole discovered in the region of Hanover. Many magical powers were attributed to it. Among other things, it was used to boost fertility and pieces were sewn into clothing to protect the gladiators. Long before Jesus Christ, amber necklaces were used to ward off diseases and to heal. In Asia, the Chinese prepared a sedative potion which contained the gem called amber syrup. Even today, Young children wear amber necklaces to protect them from toothaches, remnants of an old tradition when we gave a small piece of well-polished amber that they would chew for relief. Tahiti often goes on expeditions to meet the miners and to collect and buy their latest findings. It is here, out of the mine, that he will be in the best position to find beautiful pieces that will sell easily. This piece is not very good, but hey, since we're working together again, I want to make sure we get along well. We can help each other with all respect. 
We just found this vein. There was a gallery that's just collapsed, and we thought we weren't going to get anything at all. I know that this vein is good. It's good quality. That's exactly what I like, because it's the amber that people want the most. So we'll weigh it? Okay, yes, let's weigh it. Amber deposits are distributed in many parts of the island, especially in the eastern cordillera to Sabana del Mar. But the richest mines are located in the northern cordillera, near the cities of Puerto Plata and Santiago. It's near the latter that the mine Los Cacaos, known for its blue amber. It's in this mine that Tony goes to decide to make his fortune. Located in the rainforest, there is no access by road. se llama la mina de los cacao y hace varios años se está minando para el sustento This mine is called Los Cacao. We've been working here in recent years to sustain our families. Here five of us work in addition to others already working here and occasionally there are brigades that also come to work. If one of us finds something it is shared equally after counting the cost of labor. Encontramos algo se divide en partes iguales. We cannot operate the mine more because we cannot afford it. We just need to eat and provide a little work for ourselves. If we could get help to exploit them, then we would have galleries that would run deeper and we can come out of it with more stones. Now, when the galleries go too far, we have to demolish them because we cannot continue as they may collapse. We cannot afford to operate more tunnels. In the Dominican Republic, there is only small-scale amber mining. No industry has taken root in this economic sector. The miners use two techniques to search for the precious material. At Toca, the mine where Tony has found his cousin, galleries were dug horizontally into the rock to reach the rich layers of amber in the heart of the mountain. This rock is strong enough. You can dig long tunnels with little risk of collapse. In the Los Cacaos mine, the Ambreras will dig vertically through layers of sediment containing fossilized resin, which is close to the surface. These layers are often composed of alluvial clay and sand. The operation is extremely dangerous. A horizontal hole could collapse within a few meters. Accidents are very frequent.
You must have a keen eye out for the blocks of amber in the clay. An awkward hit with the pickaxe can destroy a block of inestimable value. Their color is identical to the parent rock. Nothing suggests that inside this gray mass is a substance with delicate colors that will provide capital to its discoverer. The sales circuit is well organized. The miners know where to go with their bounty. Buyers pay cash for a good price, and fine specimens are rare. The course is well known to everyone. There is little margin for discussion, and the transaction is quick. How are you, all right? I brought it to see if you're interested. Let's see. Let's look. Let's see. How much? Look at this one. Can we weigh it? You can weigh it. Here's the scale. Yes, let's weigh it. It weighs how much? You have how much there? This one is 200 and a few grams, 202. Listen, I'll sell it because I need the money. I didn't want to sell it. I don't want to part with it. But this, I'll make it for 10. 10,000? Yes, that's too expensive. I'll do everything all at once. Give me three. 26 for the whole lot. 26? It's too little. You know, it was very hard to extract it. It was very well buried. Listen. My last price is 28. No. Hmm? I'll give you 27,000. 27? No problem. Okay. When you have others, bring them to me. Yes, okay. Hello. Is that amber? Yes, it's amber, set with gold. Is it natural? Authentic? That's not plastic? No, no, it's not plastic. This one, yes. This is plastic. Do you see the difference? You can see the difference in salt water. If it is plastic, it remains at the bottom. If it is amber, it stays at the top, it floats. Ah, can we try? Yes, we can try. This one's plastic. Amber? It rises. Show me another method to test amber. I'll show it with fire. You see how authentic amber burns? It is authentic. Now I'll show you with plastic. The plastic doesn't burn. Amber is not a mineral. It is an organic material with special qualities. It has a very low density, allowing it to float on salt water. It is combustible. Endowed with piezoelectric properties, it attracts light objects. It's for this reason that the ancient Greeks called it electron, which later became the word electricity. I'd like you to make something with this one. In this shape here? 
Yes, in this shape, like tears. Faceted? Yeah, faceted. Okay, that's doable. Is that all or is there something else? No, that's it. We agree. Then you can do this work for me? When could it be ready? It'll be ready in 10 to 15 days. The best amber cutters are in San Domingo. El Chino is one of the masters in his field. He is able to carve and sculpt the soft matter that does not allow for any error either in the technical work, nor in the expertise of the raw block and what he will be able to obtain from it. Cracks, inclusions, frailty, color, each of these elements must be assessed with a master's eye and taken into account when carrying out the work. Cutting, polishing, and shining gradually reveal the quality of the amber. Tell me, sir. I'm making those pieces. I discussed with the man, and yes, it's possible to make them. In the workshops of Philippe Tourner, the jewelry is planned out with precision. No detail is left to chance. Like any master of his art, he oversees his jewels from birth until the very last moment. Then comes the fragile moment when the jewel takes wings and finds itself around the neck of a woman the ultimate destiny for which it was made.
Amber is a godsend for the Dominican Republic. It is for this reason that the Ambreros are wont to say that as long as the sun continues to bathe the island every day, Amber will continue to flourish. Thank you.